Hi everyone, welcome. Today is Wednesday, February 24th, and today's passage is Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 through 13, with the theme, Who is Jesus? And as always, I'm joined by Pastor Ellen. Oh, Thank it's you me! Again. Yes! It's me again! Yeah! Again. Who would have guessed, right? Okay. Yes. So today, we see at the beginning of today's passage that Jesus takes some of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, and he takes them up a high mountain. How many of you like going, climbing up mountains? Yes, Korea has lots of mountains. Mm -hmm. So he takes them up on this high mountain, and then something happens. Jesus is transformed. Oh my goodness, like yeah. Transformers, right guys? Yeah, do you guys know those Transformers <laughs> so it goes into a car or an airplane? No, it's not like that. It's a little different. So, his appearance is transformed so it becomes white. His face shines like the sun, really brightly. Mm -hmm. And his clothes became white, white as snow, white as pure light. And then, we see two people join him. And then if you look into this passage, you see that Moses and Elijah. But wait a second. Those names sound familiar, right? Yes, they. this is the Moses and Elijah from the Old Testament. Mm, they're like so, the very like, very like top, top people that yeah, you think of, right? Yeah, the they, Moses, yes, the Elijah. Exactly, yes. yes. And so as you can imagine, when the disciples saw this, they're like, what is going on, right? And so Peter, he is just, he doesn't even know what he's talking about. He's like, hey Jesus, I'm going to put up three little shelters for you guys. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, right? Sounds like kind of a strange, about, yeah, right? it's kind of a strange thing to say. I think he's overwhelmed. Yeah, he's, overwhelmed. he's just like, I don't know what's going on. Uh -huh. And so, but this kind of is significant because in, in this instance, we see that Jesus, that Peter almost perceives Jesus to be equal or on the same level as Moses and Elijah. But as we see, you no, know, Jesus is far greater than Moses and Elijah. And we see God the Father confirming this as we hear his voice booming down from the heavens. And he says, this is my son and I love him. I am very pleased with him. Listen to him. So God the Father confirms the divinity of Jesus, God the Son. And he commands us to listen to his words, to obey him. And then we see the next part. Pastor Alan's going to talk about it. Hey, yes. So, you know, he's, he, first he says, get up, don't be afraid. And then they, they look around, no one is there. And then he says, shh, don't tell anyone what you have seen until, you know, I have been raised from the dead. So this is still something that the disciples kind of don't, they rejected it. You know, yesterday Peter was, you know, rejecting that this thing is going to happen, that he has to die and be raised. Okay, now the disciples ask Jesus a question, which is, why do the teachers of the law say that Elijah must come first? Okay, Elijah must come first. And then Jesus is saying, you know, Elijah came, but they didn't recognize him. So, you know, Elijah, you know, he came, he, they didn't recognize him as who he was. Elijah had a very, I think, a lonely life, you know. He had a lonely life, and he's a prophet. So he's being God's mouthpiece, he's speaking God's word, but sometimes people don't want to hear it, right? So he said things they don't want to hear, you know, they, they're not ready to receive it, so they rejected him. And he says, Elijah's already come, they didn't recognize him. And in the same way that, you know, Elijah was abused, that the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. And we also know that, you know, John the Baptist, he was killed in prison, right? So he also, you know, wasn't, you know, he was like a prophet. I think Elijah and John the Baptist are very similar. They both have like, they're, they're crazy looking. They're like wild and people are like, whoa, what are they doing? You know, like eating locusts. And they're those kind of people. They're very, very similar. And they're similar also because... They're, you know, they're calling out, they're a voice of God speaking out. And John the Baptist's message was, he was Jesus' cousin, a couple months older. His message was to go before Jesus and call people to repentance. Repent, the kingdom of God is near, you know? And yeah, really near because Jesus is on the way, you know? He's on the way. So that was John the Baptist's calling. So, yeah, these are very, uh, very similar parallels that are happening at the same time. Yes, thank you, Pastor Ellen. And as Pastor Ellen mentioned, that was John the Baptist's message, preparing the way, repent. And if you guys remember, Jesus' first messages when he started his ministry was, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. So he's kind of echoing that and going with that in, as he started his public ministry. And we also see at the end of this today's passage that Jesus foreshadows what will happen, right? He says the Son of Man will be raised from the dead, but he tells him not to tell 
what has happened until that happens. So we see just how all throughout the Bible, God has been making everything come to fruition. He is keeping his word. The prophecies are being fulfilled, and they all culminate here with what Jesus will do for us, where he dies on the cross for our sins, and then he rises from the grave three days later to show that he has defeated sin and death, so that now we as his followers and his believers can also overcome sin and death through his victory on the cross. So let's, with that, let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. And we thank you that you sent your one and only son, Jesus, to die for our sins. We thank you that from the very beginning, that all your words and all your promises, all the prophecies that you spoke through your servants, they came true and were fulfilled in Jesus, your son. We pray that we never take this for granted, but we are always thankful for this great sacrifice, Lord. And we know that we can always have faith and trust in you, knowing that you keep your promises, that your word and your love never fails us. May we continue to live lives in obedience to your son Jesus and his teachings. May we truly live for him, and that no matter what happens, that we will continue to hold firm and strong to your teachings through your word. We thank you for this time, and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Bye -bye. Hope to see you tomorrow.